leaders to come together as a community to worship, to exalt your name, to seek your presence and your blessings. As we gather together this evening, we remember the great sacrifices of our fathers and mothers who sacrificed their lives for the reformation of the church and the society. This evening, as we remember them and come in your presence to pray and to worship, we pray, O oh Lord, that you reform us, you change us, you work in our hearts. We know a God who is always at work. You are working in your church. You are working in our lives. We need you even today to challenge and change the oppressive structures of the church and society. Our own mindset which puts others down. Our selfish desires and our longingness to be exalted in the midst of all. Lord, we pray that even as we worship you, may your spirit move in our midst powerfully and work in our hearts and lives, that we will be reformed and changed today. And as we go out from here, we will go out rejoicing from your presence. We ask this prayer in the precious name, Lord and our Savior Jesus. This evening service has been led by a different doctor. David Joseph and his Guru Shishya team and other friends. Reverend Dr. David Joseph is the assistant professor in the Department of History of Christianity. The rest of the time will be taken by this. On this day, we gather to remember and give thanks to our heritage and the faithful servanthood of those who remain true to the gospel and reform the church. We come here to worship in the name of the Baron and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us talk to the Lord in prayer. God, renewal of life and only reformer, you surround us with the great crowd of witnesses throughout time and place, whom you will have called into your work, witnessing to your gospel of liberation by grace alone. Continue now to rise up, witness for your work of renewal and reform, that we may all grow more deeply into the mystery of communion that is your church. Come now and sustain the ongoing reformation of your church. We ask this all through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now it's time for we define your friends to uh, have a Kannada Bhajan.
Elizabeth of Bronzeway, Elizabeth of Asia, and all of us. For Vatican II and for Pope John 23 and Pope Paul VI, to whom you have brought renewal in the Roman Catholic Church, we give thanks to you, God. We thank you. We, pray, we praise you and we glorify you, O oh God, for the renewal you have brought into the church through your servants, so we could worship you and read the scripture in our own language. Also, they recognize us as fellow workers in your vineyard. Lead us through your Holy Spirit for continued renewal and reforms in the church. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us all affirm our faith. Almighty God, we confess that we have distorted the gospel you have given us. Though time and again you have led us into the true light of your word, through prophets, apostles, mitres, and reformers of your church. Yet we have distorted your word through our ignorance or sometimes to legitimate our own selfish goal. Though often time we felt the need of reformation, 
anyone in the church and we have failed to do because of lack of courage in us. Forgive us, O oh God, as we celebrate the final fourth uh, birth anniversary of Martin Luther. Give us the vision, courage and enlightenment. We had to renew your church, give us the courage to proclaim your word and confess that there is one baptism, one faith and one God in our Christian life and witness as the members of the one body in whom uh, name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture portion is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 26, words 1 to 11. Deuteronomy chapter 26, words 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruits of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord so to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and settles down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God, a wandering Aramean or an ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and that he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egyptian as a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you together with the Levites and aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Hence the green present. Now there's a special number by our faculty friends.
I would like to thank our Lord Principal, Dr. Sundram Pusmatari, our Lord Chaplain, Dr. Wilson Taluri, Dr. Faculties, Students, Non-Teaching, Service Staffs, College Council, and our Lord Families, our Campbell Children, Youth, Alumni, those who physically present here, 
those who are watching through Pond Life. I want to thank Dr. Aravind, Matthew Franklin, Jagan, Samuel Kepe, Yevanesa, Isha, Subham, Manish, Harimuddha, those who involved the worship, recording and other necessities, and the Guru Shishya students and those who partake the worship. Special welcome to our student friend Carl Ruel, the third day student, newly married, his wife, Yelva Rajkani Carl I am happy to have my beloved parents. My father is a Sundar Raj, ex -Sulisman. My mother, Mrs. Vasanda Sundar Raj, does this worship service. This month, October, is special month for me. October 11th, my ordination. October 18th, my birthday. October 30th, my wife's birthday. October 31th, Martin Luther's Reformation. <laughs> Reformation Day Worship. And also, really, our faculties, the bhajan, the songs, the service, everything went on well. The climate also so uh, pleasant to us. After the worship, while going out, please take a piece of barbie sweet, which is made out of groundnut and then jaggery. It's a tradition of South Indian toffee. Thank you. The pretty evening meditation, the theme, Church Reformed and Reforming. It's based on the Old Testament reading. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5 says that You shall make this response before the Lord, your God. A wandering Arabian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. You shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Arabian was my ancestor. He went down in Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and pompous. Let's look to God in him. Parent God, as we are going to meditate upon your words, speak to us and the words we will apply in our day to day time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today we are commemorating Reformation Sunday. As today, every year in the month of October, we recall the history of the Reformation of the Church. Have you ever thought, why do we celebrate this day as special in our Church? What does the Reformation Sunday mean? Reformation Sunday usually falls on the last Sunday in our October month because that Sunday is the one closest to October 31 when Martin Luther posted his 95 thesis on the church door in Wittenberg in Germany. That dramatic event marked the beginning of a movement Reformation in the churches and set forth their spirit to reform that is at the heart of the gospel. This Sunday is an important day for reformed churches to reclaim the great motto of the Reformation. Ecclesia Reformata Semper Reformanda that means a church reformed and always being performed. It motivates 
the church to face the challenges and weakness in their context. During the reformation of the church, Protestant reformers had pointed out five truths. They are called the five solas of reformation. They are sola gracia, by grace alone, sola fide, by faith alone, sola scriptura, by script, al scripture alone, sola Christus, Christ alone, and soli bio gloria, glory to God alone. The significance of the teaching of these five truths is that the church should return to the word of God. Reformation makes a radiant call to the churches to shed false teaching and empty religious rituals and to come back to the heart of the word of God. It means the church has to reform every day by the word of God and should let the Holy Spirit take hold of the church. Deuteronomy chapter 26 is important chapter in the book as it pictures Moses. Writings of stipulations of the covenant. The book begins with the general stipulations of the covenant. It starts from the chapters 4 to 11. And then expounds on these stipulations, chapters 12 to 26. On the verge of entering the promised land, Moses addressed the second generation Israels, motivating them to keep the God's covenant. Some see this passage as a ritual creed to wrap up the explanation of the law, while others view this writing as a symbol recollection within another offertory ritual. Having this in mind, on this Reformation Sunday, we are going to meditate how our church can be reformed further with all its possibilities. How our church can be reformed further with all its possibilities. First of all, rethinking our call. Rethinking our, sorry, rethinking our giving. Let me read the Old Testament reading once again. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 to 3 says that, When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving, you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord sowed to our ancestor to give us. So first of all, rethinking our giving. The first component of the passage is the command for the Israelites when they have entered the land to give the first fruit of their products to the Lord. The Hebrew word Nathan is used six times in this very copay. It means to give every time this word is used in reference to what the Lord has given to the Israels, that is the land and the first fruits of their products. So it is interesting to note that even in the God's command to the Israel to give their first fruits to the Lord, the word to give is not used as a verb because what the Israelites bring to offer is ultimately given to them by the Lord and not their own work. So this is given as the reason why giving brings them an attitude of thanksgiving. 
So, what does the Bible say about giving? Giving is pretty open in the topic. One could go in any number of directions. So, I want you all to rethink our giving. Why do we give as Christians? What is the purpose of giving? It should be no surprise that the answer is wonderfully simple and unimaginably complex. For many of us, particularly those of us in the conversion world, it is really tempting to point and look at the needs of the world and say, that is why we give. We are giving, so we will be blessed by God and others. And this is a good motivation. According to the, but biblically, it is not the starting place for God's people to give. We also have to remember the generosity is about so much more than money. It's about our entire life, giving our time, our talent, our treasure, and if that, our giving has to motivate by something for greater than we. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 verses 23, 23 to 24 says that, So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, then come and offer your gift. In Acts chapter 2, verses 44 to 45, it says that the early Christian community, we read, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They, should, they would sell their possessions and goods, distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. This is incredible to read, isn't it? The bond, the bond between the early Christians was so strong so that they had a great desire to meet one another's need. Nothing was off limits. Homes and lives are, were open. Likewise, in the Exodus chapter 25, verses 1 to 2, says that, as plans are made for the construction of the tabernacle, the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take for me an offering from all whose thoughts prompt them to give, you shall receive the offering for me. When the people return, they had to be restrained from giving, as what they offered was for beyond what was needed. Exodus chapter 35 and 36 you can read. In 2 Corinthians, according to St. Paul, we read about a similarly generous offering giving. It contains the most exhaustive instruction of new covenant of giving, in which Paul comments about Macedonians to the Corinthians, saying that though the Macedonians were in serious affliction and extreme poverty today now we are facing, they gave is an overflow of generosity according to their means, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. St. Paul is laying out a number of straightforward principles that should guide how we give. Give generously, give cheerfully, give according to what you have decided in your heart. Give thankfully. Today, in Indian context, most of our churches are inviting the congregation to give generously by announcing regularly in the Sunday worship and also other prayers to come prepare for special offerings for the construction of huge church, church towers, church buildings and so on. And now today, the people who give offering generously to the church apart from the regular offering, 
They want their names to be exposed in the things they give in the church announcement. For example, if one family offers a wall fence for the church purpose, they want their names to be printed in all the leaves of the fan, just like advertising their names for their offering. But dear sisters and brothers, I just want to turn your attention towards the giving of the father of modern missionary movement, William Carey, and his friends, Salando Trio, Joshua Marshman, William Ward. They constructed a building in the Salando College in Kolkata. They built that main building through their hard labors. But if you go and visit the building, you cannot find any tablets and their name anywhere on that building. That is the true giving which God expects from us through which his name has to be glorified. It is really sad that in our churches we have the tradition of keeping the plate of blessing for action. That will be used to call Asirvada um, Tattu in our father's festival because it creates dichotomy between the economically well and weak in the church. Through this, we plant the class issues in our churches and pave the way for injustice to the economically vulnerable community in the church. And a wrong theology that the one who takes the plate of blessing, or Siva the Tattu, will be blessed Blessed is also deep rooted in this tradition. In other way, it means that God's blessing is set part of that one family who took the blessing plate in the action and not for the others. How terrible our religiosity and our meaningless ritual song. Where are they leading us to? Where are they leading us to? Matthew chapter 21 verses 12 to 30 says then, Then Jesus entered the temple and brought all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold those. He said to them, It is written, My house be called a house of prayer. But you are making it a den of robbers. The prophet Micah, Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 18 says then, With that, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God and pray? Shall I come before him with band offerings, with the uh, a year old, with the Lord pleased with a thousand of rams? With ten thousand of rivers of oil, shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh, mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to do love, kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? We are all brothers and sisters. I invite you to rethink our giving. Whom are we giving? What is the purpose of our giving? Whom does our giving glorify? The second way, recalling our past. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5 says that, You shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. The second commodity, an equally important part of the passage, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 26, verse 5, is the recollection of God's past providence for the Israelites in his saving work. Gagod Pumar 
get German Luther Boston and scholars saw Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 5 to 10 were considered by many. Recalling of God's saving work brings the Israelites back to sense of uh, and wonder at what God has done. This is seen in the literary structure where there are repetition of three adjectives, sections, actions or nouns in each event of the story. Verse 5, if you look at that, the wandering Aramean, whom we understand to be the Israel's ancestor Jacob, came to Egypt and became a great, mighty and populous nation. Verse 6, the Egyptians treated them harshly and afflicted them and imposed hard labor on them. Verse 7, God saw their affliction, toil and oppression. Verse 5, God brought them out of Egypt slavery with his mighty hand and outstretched arm and with great terror, with the signs and wonders. Lastly, in verse 9, God has now brought us to this place and give us this land which is a land flowing with milk and honey. This repetition emphasizes the magnitude of each evil and bring the people to worship God for the greatness of his saving act. That is the foundation of the faith. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 20 to 25, we read, God liberated Israel from the bondage in Egypt and made as a mighty nation and commanded them through Moses to share their past history of slavery and freedom to their generation after generation. We also can witness in the Bible, whenever this nation ignored this commandment, God again sent them back to a life of slavery and liberated them as they realized their mistakes. So in this sense, we Indian Christians sometimes forget our family history, sometimes we forget our society history, sometimes we forget our own traditional history. Very often I denies our past in 1st Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 to 28, St. Paul remains the Christians that we should always remember our past and how God nothing made as a people or nation. So, every time we remember our past, recalling our past. Recently, on October 28, 2021, the Hindu news newspaper, Metro Plus Chennai edition, published an article titled, The Empire Rides Back, written by Deva Alexander. See, in there is a book in her article which deals with the story of the world's biggest drug deal. The article says how the city-based writer Thomas Mangel's book on drugs and colonial trade took shape and why the past will remain a debating ground for the future. The book summarizes in the 9th century the British East Indian Company operated a triangle of trade that started the globe. Running from India to China, China to Britain, from India to China, they took opium. From China to Britain, they took tea. From Britain to tea, India, they brought empire. It was a machine that consumed cheap Indian land and labor and spat out money. Now, in the present context, our mother country India is to rule by the same colonial policy of Maharaja, includes the entire wealth of India. The global media company Forbes list of top 10 richest persons in India in 2021 shows the self-centered life of a few where the entire economy is going hunger. Because of economic deprivation, the people of the own soil. As a theological community, 
Let us recall our past and teach our generation about the pain and struggles of the vulnerable community like migrant laborers, destitute women, parentless children, homeless and the marginalized in India to move forward in the mission of social transformation facing the struggles on the way to reform the church. Thirdly, we affirming our faith. We affirming our faith. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 11 to 12. Then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. When you have finished paying all the tithe of your produce in the third year, which is the year of the tithe, giving it to the Levites and the aliens, the orphans and the widows, so they, they may eat their fill within their own towns. The third component of the passage, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 11 to 12, is Israel's reaffirmation of their faith. They bring their first fruits before the Lord with gratitude and affirm their faith for the Lord. Throughout the exodus out of Egypt and the wilderness wanderings, God had asked the Israel to have faith in his promises. However, while recalling the Israel journey, we can see that they have failed at this request numerous times and even for failing to enter the promised land at first. In the second attempt to enter the promised land, Israel's were called back to the one who has brought them this far and they were asked to sow a little faith. They were called to give up the first of their produce as offering. It is not an easy task as it is a means of livelihood for them. It challenges their faith in a way that they should have a belief that in their giving they will receive more for their servant. We affirming our faith. In James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26, if you read, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but not have works, can faith save you? If your brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith itself, if it has no works, is dead. For just as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without is also dead. We are all the Indian church is called to make or renew a living experience in the life of the church which requires a costly commitment. Well-known theologian Yemam Thomas rightly observes that there cannot be a true church with the continuity of existence in the world. It is a contradiction in terms. Die and get resurrected every day a new fellowship, a new creation, not the world, world on continuing. That alone be Christ's church towards a world without walls. George Sagaria, our former faculty, and the theologian says that we live in a scandalous world that denies God's call to life for all. The new and reformed church is called to be a witnessing presence in the public sphere and to expose our faith in actions and hence it is a public church. Arvind Nirmal reminds us the church should engage in public witness. The virtual and the given in this context is our own situation, our own history, our own struggles our own aspirations, our own fears, and our own hopes. God is 
dynamically present in this. God is savingly active in this. This is where we have to discern the gospel happening and becoming. Our commemorating the Reformation Sunday, we as the Reformed Church and the Church in the process of Reformation are called to rethink our giving, to recall our past, and to reaffirm our faith. Let us commit ourselves into the mighty hands to be used as instruments for the betterment of the church, family, and society. Here I, I would like to conclude the reflection quoting our great principal, Dr. Sundaram Prasmatradi's words. Transforming reformation is the need of the power. The church needs to hypercritical theologians who walk above the ground, but a prophetic reformer who walks on the ground and toil the soil. The church needs no clergies who hang on the cross on their neck, but the one who hang themselves on the cross. Can the 500 years, now 504 years old transforming reformation reform the church of India today? Martin Luther's word. Here I stand. I can do other. So help me God. Amen. Here I stand. I can do no other. So help me God. Amen. Let us say the formation. I refuse to believe that we are unable to influence the event around us. I refuse to believe we are bound by racism, war, and injustice. I believe those around me are my brother and my sister. I believe in dignity every day and that our brokenness can be healed. I believe we can overcome oppression and violence without resorting to it. This means I seek to reject revenge and retaliation. I remember hate cannot derive out hate. Only love can. Let us offer prayer, our prayers to God, responding to each petition with the words, grant us your tender care. On this day, commemorating the reformation of God, we pray that Christian churches around the globe will be reformed and renewed, that ecumenical collaboration be widened and deepened, and that we stand firm in the gift of the gospel. Hear us, Holy God. Grant us your tender care. Attending to the natural earth, O oh God, we pray that the seas and lands be cleansed of pollution, that both rainstorms and trout be moderated, and that animals retain their habitat. Hear us, this was God. Grant us your tender care. Aware of disorder around the world, O oh God, we pray that Wars and arms, the regime sees that violent extremism everywhere to come. Have governments meet the needs of their poorest residents, that the day before our determination be peaceful, and that all prejudice based on gender, color, orientation, or ethnicity be rejected. Hear us, Sovereign God. us. Facing the coronavirus, O oh God, we pray that the pandemic and anxiety subsides, that medical personnel and service be everywhere supported, that any who are unemployed find work and all who have been evicted find housing, and that a trustworthy vaccine be developed. Hear us, compassionate God. Yes. 
moved by the needs of all our neighbors, O oh God. We pray for those suffering from discrimination, for those imprisoned or held in immigrant camps, for farm workers and their children, for all who are hungry and for those who we name here before you. Hear us, Mother in God, grant us your tender care. Thinking lastly of ourselves, O oh God, we pray that we be enabled to love our neighbors as ourselves and that you receive, your per receive our personal petitions. We pray for our Gurukul community, the principal, teaching and non-teaching staffs, students and their family members, the college council, the alumni's, that your hands continue to bless us and carry us. God, we thank you and we praise you for successfully completing the first semester of our academic year. God, you know our hearts and our efforts through online digital classes. God, we pray for our forthcoming first semester examination. Bless our students, protect them, guide them, exalt them, and hold them. May they know your peace in their hearts, your vision for their lives, and your strength as they work. Hear us, loving God. Grant us your tender care. Grateful for the lives of all who have died in the faith, especially for all the people whose efforts reformed and renewed the church. O oh God, we pray that at the end we join with them in your glory. Hear us, eternal God. Grant us your tender care. Enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, as we trust in your might and your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Shall we all sing a hymn, and mighty fortress is our God. In the meantime, offertory will be collected.
Let me say the opportunity to pray. Oh God, we thank you for all your blessings upon each and every one of our life. All of your manifold blessings, we bring these offerings into your altar. May you cleanse it and accept it. Bless all the cheerful givers. Bless each and every one of our life. Committing these offerings and our life into your care. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shall we all stand for the Lord's prayer together? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence, beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power, and the glory, and the mercy. For your name is all in one. Amen. You may be seated. See the benediction. Seek justice, voice out against oppression, defend the marginalized, and become an agent of peace. May the Creator God, who responds to the cries of the oppressed, the compassionate Christ, who is committed to the reign of God, and the Holy Spirit equips person to be disciples of Jesus Christ, be with us this day and forever. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to. Thank you, friends. Have a nice day.